All right, hello everyone. This is a tutorial for MuseScore on how to make really nice looking lead sheets. The style here is inspired by the Chuck Scherer publishing new real books. And then I'm just going to show you how to achieve this kind of formatting in terms of spacing, getting really nice looking charts, and tricks I've developed over the years for saving time and some things that are a little bit frustrating to figure out how to do. We're going to cover all of those so you can get a nice looking clean chart like this. We're going to first just start with making our new file on Mac to get a copyright symbol you do option G. Don't ask me why. If you choose a jazz style that's going to give you the chord symbols that look the way we want to as well as the fonts. You can always change the style later on but for now let's just select jazz lead sheet. So here we are with a new blank lead sheet. We've got this frame at the top which controls the vertical alignment of everything. I'm just going to bring that up to begin with. I don't need it to be this big. I'm going to start with my four lines per bar. There's two ways to do line breaks. One is to select the measure you want the line break after and press the return key. And for something this short, that works fine. Another way to do it is to select everything and go to format add remove system breaks and we want break systems every four measures so that's just another way to do that to get the form laid out clearly I also like to make sure I do any kind of repeat signs and double bar lines right away MuseScore uses this palette for everything on the left here so if you can't find it over here if you're trying to change something it's going to be in the inspector on the right which we get to by pressing the F8 key and that's where you can control more nuanced things about anything you've selected but we don't need that for bar lines we just need the bar lines menu I'm gonna put a repeat sign at the end of my 16th bar and I'm going to put a repeat sign at the end as well as at the beginning because this is typical lead sheet format in my other video I covered a little bit about how to type notes into MuseScore quickly how to do quick note entry with rests and everything so let's do a quick little crash course on that to put in rhythms. The numpad is how we select the different rhythms. As you can see up here, doing it with the mouse is way too slow. We don't want to be using the mouse except when we absolutely have to. So this is editing mode. We press in to get into editing mode or you can click the button up here, but again, don't use the mouse. I'm pressing five for quarter note and I'm going to put zero because it's a rest. I'm going to go to eighth notes by pressing four G, C. You can also see any keys I'm hitting down here on my key casting software. I'm going to just put in my melody here. For a long rest, seven is the whole note and then zero is a rest. But you'll notice that when you put a whole rest into a measure, it actually does something kind of funny. So to fix that, Whenever it happens, you just select the measure and hit backspace. It's going to clear that measure out. Back into editing mode. Five, zero. And if you want to go up an octave, you can move left and right with the arrow keys and command up. I believe it's control up on Windows. And that's going to move our notes up and down an octave. You can use the arrow keys to do that. Also, when you want to add chords later on, we're not going to do that on this piece, but command and then a number gives you that interval. So I just pressed command five and I got a fifth above my G. Six for half notes, I'm gonna move that up an octave. Five dot for dotted quarter note, four for an eighth note, move it up. Seven, zero, oh whoops, don't want that. Now I want to tie this eighth note to a half note. I'm going to press six for my half note and then just press the plus key and it adds a tied note so I don't have to go back and add ties later. If you wanted to add a tie later, you select this and again just hit the plus key. Great, so my melody's finished. I want to add chords. So the hotkey for chords is Command K. I believe it's Control K on Windows. And I'm just going to start on the first measure. And 
MuseScore is pretty smart about chord symbols. Um, there's my major six chord. For minor chords, you can use a minus symbol or you can write MI. I'm going to use the MI just like the new real book series because we're trying to emulate that style. And I'm just gonna go through here and add some more of our chords. The space bar advances by a note and the tab key advances by a measure when you're typing chords out. For extensions, we can put parentheses and those will automatically be superscripted. And you can also hear it actually playing back these chord symbols as I put them in, which is a feature that you can disable if you don't like it. But I think it can be kind of nice to just orally confirm that you've put the right thing in. Slash chords work great too, C9 over E. For diminished symbol, you can use a lowercase o, and again, it will be automatically turned into a diminished symbol. Holding shift and pressing tab or spacebar lets you move backwards while you're doing this. So again, you never have to use the mouse. Don't touch the mouse. The mouse is slow. Great, I finished putting my chord symbols in for the melody. MuseScore does something funny when we want to put slashes in for my solo section. Because this piece is in cut time, when I go to tools, fill with slashes, I get these stupid half note slashes, which I don't want. That's not typical of anybody's publishing. I want them to look like this, regular four beats per measure slashes. So I don't know of any way to change the default, but what we can do is make an invisible time signature change. So we're going to change to four four time for the second half here. And we're going to hide the common time symbol. So let's go to time signatures. Let's grab our common time symbol. For some reason, time changes also remove our four lines per bar. So I'm going to just quickly re-add those with the return key. I'm going to make this invisible by pressing V. You can make anything invisible. You can make notes invisible if you don't want them to print. You can make stems invisible. It can be useful for various types of notation. Now, I also lost my forward repeat bar line. Select all that, and now when we fill with slashes, there's our four slashes per bar. I'm going to put some more chords in. Quick note on copying and pasting chords. You can select a chord, hold shift, select another one, command C or command X. Let's do command C for this one. Go to where we want to paste it, and we can put it in that way. You can move them around this way, and when you want to change one, you can double click on it. If you want to type a half diminished symbol instead of a minor seven flat five symbol, which is my preference, you can press the zero key and that zero will turn into a half diminished symbol. There, okay, my chord symbols are finished. Something else you'll notice about this style of lead sheet is we only have one treble clef and a bar line at the beginning of the measure, which is not how our lead sheets look by default in MuseScore. So how do we do that? So we just need to go to Format, Style, Bar Lines, Bar Line at Start of Single Staff. Then we're going to go to Page, and we're going to turn off Create Clef for All Systems. Now we have our bar line, but not our clef on every line, and it is looking pretty much how we want Let's go over how to create these nice solo boxes and formatting the page a little bit. So the main way to squish things into place in MuseScore is with vertical frames. We can add a frame by going to the bottom of the page, selecting a measure down there, add frame, append vertical frame. Append means at the end. And I can drag this. It's a little counterintuitive that I'm dragging down, but it's making it bigger. so. It works. I want some space between my lead sheet and my solo section, so I'm going to add another frame here. So then we're going to insert a frame right above the solo section, and I'm going to make that a little smaller. And now this has spilled onto the next page, so this frame is now a little too big. 
and that's actually how I want that formatting. So, great. How do we add rehearsal marks? Rehearsal letters are under text, and they are smart. So if you add one and then add another one, they automatically change the letters. I'm trying to make this look exactly like the chart I made the other day. So again, we're going to need to make the frame on these letters a little thicker. So I can select this one, hold command and select that one, press F8 to get my inspector. And then I'm gonna change the thickness of this box up by two. You can also make the box tighter around the letters so they take up less space on the page. That looks good to me. Now, there's a lot of different styles of text on this lead sheet as well. So let's do the solos mark that we have here. There's one type of text that shows up on every part. It's called system text. And there's one type of text that shows up only on the part that you have per instrument. So I'm going to make this a system text. So it goes above the bar line. Command Shift T. Um, not sure what that one is on Windows, but you can also do add text system text and you can always see the hotkeys there and I'm just gonna write solos I'm gonna select all that text and I'm gonna make it much bigger and again F8 to get to my inspector I want to give it a nice fat frame and I'm gonna give it a radius of 100 to get this box shape the margin brings it away from the letters and I'm gonna put a 0.5 because I think that is exactly how I want that to look. Another thing you'll see on these charts is notes at the end of the form are aligned to the right. So again, we can add that text and then change that option in the inspector. I'm gonna press Command Shift T. I'm gonna type after solos, D, C, Alphine. Head is played twice before and after solos. I'm gonna move it below. I'm gonna make it a little bigger and I'm going to press F8 and I'm going to align it to the right because it looks good. Cool. Now the footer text. This looks kind of corny in this font. I want it to be in a regular serif font again like this. I'm copying the style of the new real book shamelessly ripping it off because it looks so good. We can change that under style text styles we get a whole nother list of everything you can change the text style of everything this is a footer it's not called copyright it's called footer I'm gonna keep it center aligned and I'm just gonna make this Times New Roman and I'm gonna make it a little larger you can do everything you want here if you want it to be bold if you want it to be you know all your typical text formatting there's another note they included on this chart that seems extraneous but let's do it solos may swing I'm gonna make it times again I think in the new real book they use the serif font for things that are a little bit less important or more obvious and they use the fat marker font for things that you really need to see for the form so this is looking pretty good I do want some style text at the top of the page I like to use lyricist for this because I don't have a lyricist and it puts it in the right place medium swinging Latin. Now we are missing our fine. Again, I'm going to add system text. Fine. I want to make that nice and visible. Put it under here and I'm going to give this not a frame but an underline and parentheses. We've got one more system text I want to add. We add articulations in MuseScore with the articulations menu, and some of them do have hotkeys. You can always create new hotkeys by going to our preferences menu, shortcuts, and then typing in what you're looking for. You can look at accent is shift V. You can look at staccato is shift S. If I want to make a bunch of notes staccato, bup, bup, ba, da, bup, 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 I can click hold shift and go to the last one and hit staccato and this one is going to have a tenuto mark again select all these shift s or select the articulation you want from over here and then let me give this one a tenuto mark and i'm doing the same for the last measure and this looks now pretty much just like a chart out of the new real book another way to add the space between things is to instead of using a frame 
we can use spacers like so and just make the chart look good okay if you want to change fonts you can use any font you want and that's looking pretty good so let me know if there's any questions if you have any other questions about formatting anything else that you want to know how to do that's been frustrating to you with MuseScore you can make stuff pretty quick and if you want to get a quick preview of your chart without all the gray marks we can uncheck show invisible unprintable frames and then we have a nice clean view of our chart so we can make sure everything is laid out how we want it I move this up a little bit and make it a little larger and so there you go How do we make transpose parts quickly? So what we're going to do is we're going to save a copy. And I'm going to call this concert. You probably want to keep all these in the same folder just to keep things tidy. Now I'm going to do select all, which is command A, tools, transpose. I'm going to go up one major second. And this is going to be my B flat part. I'm going to add text. Once again, I'm going to use Lyricist just because it puts it in the right place. Type B flat, select it, make it nice and big, and put it right at the top of the chart as well. It's always good to check the formatting and you know make any tweaks you need to to the chord spellings if you need to go back and change any inharmonic spellings of notes. This looks okay because we just went from C major to D major, but when you have a lot of chromaticism, it may not be as neat and you may have to make some changes then I'm gonna do file save a copy I'm gonna call this st. Francis B flat and now we'll make our E flat part so we're gonna select everything we're going to transpose down a perfect fourth make sure that the range of our notes is good you could put it up an octave with the command up key or command down key to change octaves whenever you need to. Make sure my spellings and placements aren't too messed up. Again, you can always select things like this. Click, hold shift, click another one and move them around to quickly change formatting. But this looks all right. And then I'm going to make sure I change this. And I don't want to save this as the B flat part. I want to save a copy as E flat. Save a copy as E flat. Now I've got E flat. It is a minor third below the concert part, just to confirm everything. And I've got my B flat part, which is a whole step up from the concert part. And everything else is the same. 